Now what you have to do in response to that is repent and trust the Savior. Ask Don't just, yeah, yeah. Well, it's more than that. Repentance is actually a turning from your sins. It's saying, God, I've sinned against you. I'm sorry, I'm not going to sin anymore. To my saints in the Lord, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Saints in the Lord. Great Comfort has the most demonstrable false gospel I have ever seen. And it is as false as he is popular. Wow. Almost one and a half million subs now. This video is 13 years old. So what Ray does is he gives the law. It starts out right about here. He gives the law to somebody to show how they're unrighteous. This is the only thing that he does well. And he articulates it well. Let's take a listen. Well, the best way I can show you that is to ask you a couple of questions. And this will help you understand why you need to be born again. Do you think you're a good person? Yes. Okay, and I'm going to put you on the stand, okay? I'm going to be the prosecutor. You're going to be the defendant. Okay. I'm going to examine you under the light of God's law, the Ten Commandments. And all I want from you is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. Can you do that? I can. So you're a good person? Yes. How many lies have you told in your life? <laughs> I don't know. You lost count? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Okay, what do you call someone who tells lies? A liar. Have you ever stolen anything in your whole life, even if it's small? In my whole life? Probably. I, maybe when I was a child. What do you call someone who steals things? A stealer. A thief? A thief. <laughs> have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Do you realize what you're doing when you do that? Yes. What are you doing? I'm, I, I'm taking his name in vain. Using his name as a cuss word to express disgust, which is called blasphemy. It's very serious. Now, Jesus said, if you look with... I don't feel like a good person anymore. <laughs> that's, the, that's the purpose of the Ten Commandments. They show us self and truth. And you got up this morning. Did you look in the mirror? Sure. Why? Because I had to get ready. You want to clean yourself up. Yeah. And the mirror told you the truth. Yes, it did. And the commandments are like a mirror. They reflect what we are in truth. We have, we're deluded and we don't see ourselves in truth until we look at the commandments. I mean, I bet you've never thought yourself as a lying thief before. No. But the commandments reflect exactly what we are. Now, Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery of the heart. You ever look with lust? <laughs> sure. Okay, you're a normal human being. So listen to this, Steph. Here's the, here's the mirror. By your own admission, I'm not judging, you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. And that's only four of the Ten Commandments. I've never killed anyone. <laughs> Have you ever hated someone? <laughs> yes. The Bible says, he who hates his brother is a murderer. That's how high God's standards are. Okay. Okay, now, here's the big question. If God was to judge you by the Ten Commandments on the Day of Judgment, would you be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Would you go to heaven or hell? I'd go to hell. Does that concern you? Sure. Sure. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, it does concern me. Because we're on a plane. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> If the plane goes down, wow, this is eternity we're talking about. Yeah. Now, do you know what God did for humanity, for sinners, so he wouldn't have to go to hell? Yes. What did he do? He gave his only son. Suffered and died on the cross. Now, do you realize that was a legal transaction? Do you understand that part? Mm, no. Let me put it this way. In God's eyes, you and I are criminals. He's a judge. We have violated his law, the Ten Commandments. 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid our fine in his life's blood. That means God can legally dismiss your case. You can walk out of the courtroom. God can commute your death sentence because your fine was paid 2,000 years ago by he who suffered for you and rose again on the third day. Okay? Now what you have to do in response to that is repent and trust the Savior. Ask Don't just... Yeah, yeah. Well, it's more than that. Ray is about to articulate what repent and trust the Savior is. Now, we can look at a verse in the Bible that Ray might want to invoke, and that would be Luke. 13.3 I tell you nay but except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish now false preachers like Ray 
they're going to use this verse to support their doctrine and not tell you what the context of the verse is at all. Jesus is almost always speaking to Jews in verses like this. And these Jews would be looking to attain righteousness by the law. That's why John 1.17, John the Baptist says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. What Ray is going to do is just give this woman more law. At this point, I would take her to Galatians 3 if I could speak to this woman. But before the faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster, which would be the law of Moses. But hear what Ray says instead. Repentance is actually a turning from your sins. It's saying, God, I've sinned against you. I'm sorry, I'm not going to sin anymore. No more lying, no more stealing, no more blasphemy, no more lust. And you say, hey, boy, that's pretty heavy. Well, what happens is that God gives you a new heart with new desires. When you're born again, he gives you his Holy Spirit and gives you the power and the desire to do that which pleases him. I... Yeah, but Ray made the mistake of saying this do in response to that is repent and trust the Savior. Notice the order. You have to repent, which he defined by turning from all sin. That would mean you have to keep the law of Moses perfectly, and then you will receive Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. So that is receiving the Spirit by the works of the law, which is literally what the Judaizers were doing in Galatia, and why Paul had to call them foolish. And it says right there in Galatians 3, in the very beginning of the chapter, O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only what I learned from you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of the faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit are ye made perfect by the flesh now so what ray is doing is putting the cart before the horse he's saying listen you need to keep all of the law and keep it perfectly he told her to never lust again he just called her normal for lusting a minute ago and jesus said if you look with lust you commit adultery of the heart you ever look with lust <laughs> sure okay you're a normal human being so listen to this Steph. the guy's a double talking silver tongue devil and this is the most demonstrable false gospel I could find. Where was I? 413 about? Believe the radical change in my life. On the inside, I became a brand new person. It was radical when I was born the first time. I didn't exist, then I did. Being born again or born in the Spirit is just as radical. You're a brand new person with a heart that hungers to please God. And that's a miracle. You know, I didn't think of God for one minute in 22 years as a non-Christian. But when I became a Christian, to date, it's been 37 years. There wouldn't be one minute when I wasn't thinking of him. I wasn't conscious of him. Now he's talking about what he's doing, and he's thanking God. He's thanking God that he's not like other people. He's not a swindler. He's not an adulterer. He's not a fornicator. You know, he does good work. You know, he's not going to say he tithes and things like that. He's not literally the Pharisee staying in front of the publican, but he is indeed a modern day Pharisee. And I always like to caveat that by saying it's more like a wannabe Pharisee because the Pharisees of old would actually have some kind of religious zeal that would be noticeable because they were actual students of the Torah. Rewriting it, the scribes, the Pharisees, the lawyers, writing the Torah over and over again, making copies of it, knowing it in and out, doing it from sunup to sundown, but it was a righteousness of their own. He condemned them. However, with Ray, you know he's not doing that. I'm not saying he doesn't study the scripture. I'm not saying that. What I mean is that he's not practicing the Torah because Ray would say that the Levitical laws and all those things were put away. 
Now he just needs to keep the Ten Commandments, which is more heresy. Okay, if you stumble at the law at one point, you have broken it all. And if you are circumcised, which is one portion of the law, you're a debtor to the whole law. You see how that works in concert? If you break one law, you've broken them all. And if you take up one portion of the law, you must take it all up. That's why Paul says, if ye be circumcised, you're a debtor to the whole law now. You can't just get circumcised and leave the rest of the law alone. That's exactly what that means. And so what Ray and a lot of people like him do is to get out of all these scriptures that say you're not under the law anymore. They just say it's Levitical priesthood, washing of hands, practices of the sacrifice of animals and that nature. And they find themselves in extreme false gospel heresy. Because he's changed my heart, give me new desires. So if the plane goes down, he's changed Ray's heart. Now, this woman's confused. She doesn't know what's happening right now. You could tell as the video plays that this is a heavy burden. He's supposed to come with grace and truth. Jesus says, Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come unto me, all ye that burr and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The yoke is the wooden apparatus that would keep the cattle in line as they plowed the field. He's telling this woman that you need to do the law just to receive the Spirit. After you receive the Spirit, you have to continue repenting of all your sins to maintain the Spirit. Or however Ray sees salvation in his Arminian view, it's insane. This woman is confused. She understands the law and how she's a complete and epic failure under it and he won't release her from it that's because he's a devil for this woman who doesn't know the gospel yet she ain't getting it from him either down you didn't up in hell okay Sounds like it. there are two things you have to do to be saved do you remember what they are i told you what they are you got to repent and trust the savior when are you going to do that i don't know when do you think you should do that? I should do it now. She doesn't know because she has no clue what he's talking about. All he did was prove her guilty and then not give her a way out. It's quite vexing because the Bible says this, Acts 16 and verse 29. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. So the only time in all of Scripture when someone's talking about salvation of their soul, they ask explicitly, what must they do? And the answer is faith alone, in Christ alone. What would stop you? When God's offering you everlasting life upon your repentance and faith in Christ. Who in his right mind wouldn't say, whoa, that's a good offer? Well, I don't know what repenting, what I have to do to repent. Have you ever said you're sorry to someone that you did something wrong to? Yes. That's all repentance is. You have sinned against God. It's a matter of saying, God, I'm sorry, and then living a lifestyle that proves the reality of your repentance. That's what repentance is. It's a continual thing. Yes, do works meet for repentance, which is not works of the flesh, there's nothing in the scripture that defines a person's regenerated state other than their testimony of the blood. You cannot see a person and say they're regenerated because of their behavioral patterns. For all we know, Ray Comfort belongs to a secret BDSM club that he visits an hour once a week. How many pastors have been exposed? There's a controversy surrounding Apologia Studios with one of their congregants molesting his daughter and it being kept a secret. And these are staunch Calvinist legalists. Jeff Durbin is one of James White's protégés. And James White, I remember giving a sermon once. And at the end of the sermon, he said, if anyone dare uses this doctrine of eternal security as a license to sin, their damnation is just. That's not scripture. 
that is a butchering of scripture to make it fit a narrative that you want to support. Because it's very likely that you either are in Galatian error or you never received the love of the truth ever. Listen, the agents of Satan appear as ministers of righteousness. Paul said to marvel not at that. And so I assume that means they can appear to even have the correct doctrine. They can appear on the outside clean, sinless, upright, but God knows the hearts. So as Ray is giving this woman a false testimony of Christ, he's not even giving the record of God's son, which is that he gives unto us eternal life, and this life is in his son. He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God, God abideth in him and he in God. He that believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, 1 John 5, 1. He wanted to know what the evidence was of being born again or how to become born again. You don't become born again by doing anything. You believe because you're born again. But there's no need to present the gospel that way. That's not the milk of the word. The milk of the word would be believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. She wants to know the way out. She's under the law. She realized she's a sinner. He's mixing up how to be born again with, see, this is why people have to understand that your new birth is not of anything you do. As uncomfortable as that is for you, if anyone doesn't believe that regeneration precedes faith, this is what you end up with. Doing works of the law for the faith. Doing works of the law to receive the spirit. Your faith in Christ is the evidence that you've been born again. He that believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Blaspheme your name ever again. It has that attitude. And the second thing, trust in Jesus, is like you trust a parachute. You're on a plane, you're trusting the pilot. Have you met the pilot? You're trusting your life to his ability. Well, if you can trust a man, how much more can you trust Almighty God? He's comparing the faith that one has in Christ as trusting in an inanimate object and he's trying to couch it like look yes god is severely greater than this parachute but he doesn't understand the love of the truth right because he has never received it he would never tell someone to keep the entirety of the law to receive the spirit of christ if he knew the truth and he's been doing this for like 35 years but he's trustworthy he's faithfully promised does that make sense yeah so when do you think you'll get right with god very soon. Why not today? Yeah, that look of confusion on her face says it all to me. There was no good news delivered to her. If she's one of God's people, she will believe. God causes the increase in growth. We're not here to say to someone, when are you going to do this? When are you going to get right with God? Are you going to do it now? Why wouldn't you do it? Are you an idiot? What's wrong with you? Did Paul ever preach that way? No. He said, I planted and Apollos watered. But God causes the increase in the growth. You don't cause the increase in the growth. That's like saying you're going to plant seeds in the ground and then you're going to go into the ground and try to make the seeds grow. No, you can only plant them, water them, wait for the sun to come up, and watch them grow. So if someone believes in Jesus Christ, it's because he put his spirit in them and they believe the truth. Well, I mean, I will. I mean, I could. I don't know. Why don't you? I, I, I don't want to force you into it, but I want to say the plane could go down, and this is eternity. This is more serious than a heart attack, so get right with God, and then... Right there, look at that face. She's feeling slightly condemned. I mean, she's understanding that there's a judgment, and if there is a judgment, then she needs a savior. She needs the blood atonement. And whom Christ died for will come into the faith. There's no doubt about that. If she belongs to Christ, she will come to him, because all that the Father give to me shall come to me, and he who comes to me I will in no wise cast out. John 6.37 Let him do the rest. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Think about this? I, well, I don't need to think about it. I just need to do it, I guess. But I don't even know how to do it. We can pray when I turn the camera on. Yeah, they're going to pray for her. They're going to pray for her to receive the Spirit of Christ. How? God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners. Ray comforts a sinner. He is in his sin. He's trying to say that he does all of the law all the time and that he doesn't sin anymore. When he just proved that you can commit adultery without even doing the act. So under that law, 
which is the perfect scrutiny of God, Ray is going to be found guilty on judgment day when he tries to offer up his works and say, but I haven't looked with lust in 40 years. I have not committed adultery. I have not killed anyone. I don't steal. That's what he's going to be saying when he's in the Matthew 7 crowd on that day because he's a false prophet. His prophesyings are false. And so it didn't take long to demonstrate how obvious this false gospel is putting works in front of faith. You would think that after 40 years of reading the Bible, he could read Ephesians 2, 8, 9 and believe it for once. Or John 6, 47, or John 3, 15, or John 3, 18, or John 3, 36. You see what these people do is they just simply redefine faith. Faith becomes works. You're saved by grace. That's how you're saved, through faith. Faith is that vehicle that allows you to ascertain grace from God. But according to Ray, that's just the beginning. Actually, I'm sorry, it's not the beginning. The beginning is stopping all your sinning. This is actually a turning from your sins. It's saying, God, I've sinned against you. I'm sorry, I'm not going to sin anymore. At what point do you get the Spirit? At what point do you become born again? Imagine working to become born again. Man, that is a novel concept if I've ever heard one. And that's going to do it for Ray Comfort and his false gospel. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Saints in the Lord.